Well, I'm off to get Kurt because apparently yesterday wasn't enough excitement. We're off to Bergdale and uh, I'm under strict orders not to buy any more bikes for at least another year. We'll see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. So Kurt, how do you how do you fix that problem with the circuit breaker? So find your wires you're not sure about. If there's wire nuts on, take them off, and you just lick two fingers and put one on each side, and that'll kind of identify where the issue is. Down on my luck, I feel like a fool. So they started doing this in the 17 soft tails. Is that right? 2018. 18. See that? See that? Yeah, disengaged it. So I can pull my clutch cable out, right? Now you know how you adjust it when you're done? Pop that out. You take your derby off, you adjust your clutch tension, right? You pop this little tab back in, here back out. And pop it back in, pull the clutch. Yep, nice. Very Isn't that cool. slick? Well, it is very slick. I don't know. I think that looks good. It looks excellent. It's a good thing there's no ladies here. But I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep it. Hey, Brad, can you make the vroom vroom sound? Vroom, 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 vroom. Ba, 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 potato, 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 potato. <laughs> yeah, right those, those look pretty slick. So we got to figure out the length of this extension that, that Kurt was showing us a little bit a while back. Um, you're going to, does this one go on the outside or does that actually go on That's the inside outside, of the bar? Outside. Okay. So that helps a little. So Kurt continues to work on his bars for his soft tail deluxe. He's got some additional parts to order. And for those of you that don't know, the name of those bars are called panty droppers. So you can just about imagine the juvenile jokes that we were making while we were working on his bike. So this is another Raspberry Pi I'm working on that I will use for development down here in the office. Uh, I guess it does matter if you're if you're running Windows 10 or Linux or whatever, you're going to wait for the updates when you're done. I mean, this has even become the reality on our, our PlayStations. Um, and, and to be honest, it was somewhat off-putting for me because I just want to be able to put in a game and play, but that's not how it works today. So you might say, well, pff, that's great, you're a nerd. <laughs> what am I going to do with these devices? And I would tell you that, uh, you know, the footprint on these Raspberry Pis are, are small, like deck of cards, small. And uh, if, you're, if you're into motorcycles, you might want to consider putting one of these in one of your bags connected with a a um, earphone to earphone plug and, and, a, and a small USB memory stick and suddenly you have the capability of playing your entire music library through through your your motorcycle um, interface for your audio system. Um, I would imagine that there are Bluetooth dongles that you can get to and uh, automatically kind of convert your traditional earphone aux in stereo into something that can receive Bluetooth. Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of knowledge and all of it's readily available on the internet. Uh, and I'm not gonna say just anybody can do it uh, because you, you do have to have a little bit of knowledge about computers, but it's, it's an opportunity that's there for you. It's something you can look into now that you know what to ask for. So, no matter what you're doing, um, think about the Raspberry Pi. It really is a really neat opportunity. 
to have a computer for, you know, the price point, depending on the generation that you get, somewhere between 30 and 100 bucks, including the case. Um, you can go to Office Max these days or uh, Best Buy or any of your favorite stores and pick up a memory, memory USB memory stick for cheap, like insanely big. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I came from a generation where I remember how awesome it was when we can get 850 megabyte uh, hard drives to put into our systems. And now you can get what, like a 64 gigabyte thumb drive for 10 bucks. Um, and, and that's probably expensive. I haven't priced them lately. You can probably get far more than that. Uh, and, and, you know, my music library is maybe 50 gigs, and I have a pretty extensive library, uh, even including CDs that I've converted over to MPEG-3. So um, certainly your library uh, is likely to fit on that. Um, anyway, I, I, I hope this may have inspired new ways of looking at things and, and new potential uses. And if I didn't mention it before, I don't have it powered up, but you can buy LCD screens and controls for your Pies too. This is actually a touch screen. Um, adds a little bit of cost to it, but I think this particular screen runs around 50 bucks. So, you know, you can imagine mounting that up on somewhere on your fairing and actually having touchscreen controls for your music. Now we're going to give some love to my dresser. When I got the Softail Slim, I think they were kind of surprised that I was not looking to trade. But uh, what can I say? You know, each of the bikes that I have have their own strengths and things that I absolutely love about them. The Softail Slim was kind of my unicorn. You know, it was the, the Mustang Shelby GT that uh, the muscle car guys probably can understand. It was... Uh, just one of my dreams and i'm gonna enjoy riding it it is very likely that i will make it a bit more suitable for touring uh i don't know that i would claim it is the most comfortable bike for that but you know what is my street glide and i have spent considerable time and energy to make it my own and that's why i didn't trade it um the Sportsters, I mean, what can I say? The 883 is the first one I had. It's very sentimental, and I'm custom building the 1200. I uh, have friends painting the tank, so yeah, I know some of you have said to me, you can't ride them all, and that's kind of true. I can't ride them all at the same time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, variety is the spice of life, what can I say? Anyway, so we're going to find out today. I spent... A little bit of money to see if I can take a Amazon part um, and I don't typically buy bike parts for from Amazon uh, but this is something that's interesting that might solve an electronics problem that I've been thinking about and ultimately make the street glide a little more comfortable it is a 2011 so it has the old style radio and there is an auxiliary port However, I really want to do Bluetooth so that I can play music off my phone wirelessly and not have to worry about disconnecting any wires. So that's where this comes in. And this is just a small dongle that gives me USB power, uh, which, which I will use. I know I said I didn't want wires. I'm okay with power uh, going up to my phone holder. And then it also has a transmitter and a Bluetooth receiver so you can transmit to the radio. So the question is how will it do with radio stations local? I have to retune it and all that. I'm hoping it's got a powerful enough transmitter uh, that I won't have to worry about that and uh, that I can listen to my books on tape or other things as I'm doing some of my cross-country trips. So this is a perfect fit for the types of things that I do with my dresser. So um, I'll plug it in, get her connected, test her out, and tell you what I think. Now, the only camera I have with me right now is my cell phone. Um, so I, I probably won't film myself while I'm watching 
how this performs, but uh, I'll show you the connections once it's done and tell you what I think. So before I do anything else, let's take a look at this. Construction-wise, it's constructed pretty well. You get two USB ports. There is also a place to put SD cards. And from what I understand, what I understand it will play MPEG-3s uh, up to, I want to say, I'd have to look at the instructions. I don't remember the, the size limitation. But anyway, you can put a, a significant amount of music on this guy. The next thing let's talk about is placement. And when I first saw this and where it was going, I was afraid it wasn't going to fit, but it it actually fits like a glove. Um, no problems whatsoever. Looks like I need to do some detailing under there, but uh, it fits. And I was also thinking about, will I have clearance problems? And the answer is no, not really. No, no worse than what was coming out of the original plug. Okay, so now we'll turn on the bike and see what it's like to program. Okay, so that looks to be like a really, really awesome $18 spent. <laughs> 18 bucks for a MPEG-3 player. I don't know that I would want to do that because the controls are kind of cumbersome down where they are. But to get Bluetooth and to be able to use my phone, um, feeding it into the main stereo... Especially considering how that thing plugged in was well worth the $18, but I don't want to jinx it. We'll see it as, as I ride and I learn a little bit more in the summer. I'm sure we'll come back to revisit this. But so far, I don't see how you beat 18 bucks. And as an aside, I was thinking about doing an upgrade to the stereo. Um, may still do speaker upgrades, but... I think actually this is going to cause me to delay any kind of update to the stereo system, especially since, you know, we had the unexpected soft tail slim. So we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Uh, some of my initial thoughts on that bike, some things that I may look at changing. Um, I'll give you a, a teaser already that uh, the bars have to be raised. Um, just the seating is a bit of a, aggressive. It's fine. You know, I did 200 miles on it yesterday. I was a little bit sore when we were done. Um, but definitely if I were going to try to iron butt on that thing, it would be, it would be a disaster. More to come. If you've never transferred the guts of something like that into a new case, then, uh, you shouldn't call yourself IT. <laughs> and I'll tell you, um... There's not a whole lot of difference between this and wiring on a bike or even doing mechanical. A lot of this is bolt-on. I know I've been taking pieces out and I know I should be using better tools than a Swiss Army knife. But as long as you know what the interfaces are and have a basic idea of how things work, uh, pretty much anybody can put a computer together. I've been doing it since I was about, uh, oh, I suppose 19, a friend of mine in college, a couple of friends of mine in college, first taught me what's involved and what I have to, to care about. And uh, these days, there's plenty of opportunity to kind of learn how to do this off of YouTube, I imagine. So if you've ever thought about building a computer and were shy of it, don't be. And I've got the motherboard transferred into the new case, as well as some of the drives. But what we found out, and you have to be careful, I wasn't paying attention, and this is a 3-inch rack mount, or 3, not 3-inch, three 3U three rack mount. And the power supply from a standard ATX that I had was too big, so I have a power supply on order. Uh, but this is pretty cool. It just kind of closes and... Just like the seats on a uh, motorcycle, right? Thumb screw. And uh, there's the front. I've got the drives yanked out. I'm going to put those on rails as well. So you'll see that momentarily. Well, as it turns out, I've been playing a little bit of the Goldilocks dance with this computer. 
Uh, as I mentioned, I wasn't really expecting a, a uh, three unit rack mount case. And so the first power supply I had envisioned using with this was too big. And I just got a slimline one today that was too small. So hopefully the one I ordered today was is going to be just right. Um, so, But I have made some progress and it's been a lot of fun. For those of you who may be checking out the channel and haven't seen me since high school, you're going to see motorcycles and you're going to see computers. And, you know, the motorcycles are, are fun for me because it's kind of an extension of what I used to love about skateboards, you know, an expression of myself, art, being able to do tricks, things like this. And this is showing that the computer nerd is still here, too. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is if you're stumbling across me and you knew me in high school, you'll see that I haven't changed a whole lot. Anyway, while we're waiting for the power supply, I did manage to get the drives installed and I did them with rails and this will be pretty cool. So I can hot swap the drives. Um, this machine isn't extraordinarily powerful. It's like a Phenom six core, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's, it's kind of an older generation machine, but it'll do the job for a file server. And then of course, on this side, same deal. This cute little rack is actually the SSD that I've got the operating system running on. Uh, it's one of two machines that I have running Windows. The rest are Linux or OS X. Uh, the other one being one of my video editing machines. So I, you know, I like the case a lot actually. And if I can get things figured out as far as the power supply, I may build an app server that's a little bit more beefy in spec. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is I've been looking at rack mount cases for Raspberry Pis. And since a lot of my systems are Unix or Linux based, I'm really toying with the idea of setting up a Pi cluster. And uh, if I can do that and, and find a cool rack mount case, that might be in the future as well. And of course, all of this is to support the new radio room that I've been building uh, outside of my office as we've been moving things around at the house to try to give purpose for each of the rooms. So anyway, that's the progress. I thought I would I would uh, bring some of my, my nerdy friends along with me uh, on this build and maybe even some of my bike friends. Um, it's, it is a true story that I absolutely do, do love building things and seeing the results of those builds. Um, this weekend I'm looking forward to doing a project with my daughter. I'll probably capture some of that. That's uh, hooking up solar to one of my, my, my wife's decorative wells. Um, we're going to put some, some lights in there and uh, try to give it some nightly ambiance, an idea that my daughter came up with, so that'll be fun. And with that, it's unbelievable to me that we're coming up on on 20 minutes. Um, and it's getting harder and harder to uh, shave these episodes. Uh, it used to be that, that it was harder to get the content, but uh, now it's it's getting harder to keep it under 20. Anyway, in typical Merc Vapor fashion, roses are red, violets are blue. Hey, look, it's a blockhead shirt. So I know we went in a few different directions this week. Uh, thank you for your continued interest. Tell your friends, uh, hit like, hit subscribe. And remember, as I tell you every week, remember to stop, smell the roses, and see the beautiful things that are around you every day.